Stability and condition are, are two terms that we use uh, when, when we're talking about uh, solving problems numerically. And the first thing you need to know, and this is really important, is that that stability is a property of of the algorithm. If an algorithm is numerically stable, that means that uh, that the algorithm does not grossly uh, magnify errors that were present in the input aren't grossly magnified into the output. Uh, that is stability, numerical stability, and that is a property of the algorithm. If if this uh, if if an algorithm is doesn't perform well on this, it's called a numerically unstable. Again, this is a property of the algorithm. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we have condition. We have condition, and condition is a property not of the algorithm, but of the problem, I think and write at the same time, of the problem itself. And so, uh, this is where we have uh, errors in the input of the in, in the input may lead uh, to uh, gross errors in the output, but not uh, necessarily as a result of the algorithm. We may have a very stable algorithm, uh, and yet we may still, even with slight errors in the input, have have gross errors in the in the output. And that is is a pro uh, a property called the condition. And it's a property of the problem itself. And if this is, if if the problem is poor, we call that problem uh, ill-conditioned. Okay. Uh, obviously, worst cases we have if we if we have both a, an ill-conditioned problem and we're using a numerically unstable algorithm. Those are both things that we want to avoid. Uh, unfortunately, uh, there's not always anything we can do uh, about the condition of the problem. Uh, sometimes there is, and so uh, we can we, we can sometimes do some things, but uh, this is this is important to note, and uh, there is a way uh, that we can define something called the condition number, and uh, they do that in the, they do this in the book, uh, Condition number. Let's so let's delve into this anymore a, a little bit, uh, but not too much, uh, because I don't I don't want us to get. Uh, I want you to know how to do a little bit of analysis on this, but I won't. I don't want you to get it too hung up on this. Uh, the condition number, and they derive this in the book, and they, and they basically they look at the relative of the error in the in the in y. So error in uh, y, they take the ratio of the error in y to the error in x, error in x. And this is um, this is relative error that we talked about before. So that'd be like uh, y minus uh, y uh, over y true right and x minus Louis over x true so I mean th this is error in x right this was the, the remember the true uh, fractional uh, relative error uh, and 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 they they derive this uh, using a first order uh, Taylor series expansion and what they come up with is the condition number is equal to uh, and what they say I think they actually made an error but because when I went through this derivation I got something different but they say x uh, tilde f of x tilde 
over I believe it's x f of x yeah this are, excuse me this is a derivative f and so this is this is how they define condition number and uh, using this condition number uh, as as defined here we can we can get an idea for how well or ill conditioned the problem is if a problem has a very large condition number, we'll just uh, here we go. Come on. Uh, if if condition number is large, then if 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 condition number is large, then it's ill conditioned. So we want this number. Uh, to be uh, as small as possible, and and it doesn't have to be super small, but but obviously the smaller it is, the better condition the problem that we have. Again, uh, emphasizing the main point here: stability is a property of the algorithm, and condition is a property of the problem itself.